Hello, I'm Jan Mulvey and you're watching the Red Men TV. Hello, welcome to the Red Men TV as Liverpool record a 1-0 win over Angie Macha, like a Matchbox 20 or whatever in the Europa League group stages to go top of Group A. Uh, before I talk a little bit about the match, let's have some of your Facebook comments. Uh, Jamie Dickey says, Good performance all round. Angie never looked like scoring. Most impressed by Wisdom, Asaidi, and Skirtle. Yes. Sabesh Sam says, Middle finger for the Downing haters. Fuck you. He is the man. <laughs> Keith Chaplin, Skirtle, man of the match. Solid again. Kenny Wheeler says uh, we've got one hell of a player in Asaidi. Yes. Uh, Lucas Emmanuel Cantares Diaz. Uh, wow, beast of a name again. Uh, well played, lads. Downing needs some praise. He does indeed. Uh, and we'll come on to that momentarily. Um, yes, Suresh uh, Balkrishna says Asaidi quality. Downing needs to play left back more often. Jones playing better than Pepe and Probs deserts, uh, deserves a start against Everton. Very good, very good point, well made. Um, and finally, in fact, you know what? I'm going to mention one because Chris Pajak has posted his very first ever match reaction comments. Good to see you, Chris. Don't know what it means. He says he's got loads of thoughts, but he's too much of a disgustoid for them to be verbalised. Have we had a drink, Chris? Have we? Um, so, no, I'm not going to round up on that. Um, Wilson, Noah, um, Belky, Bakey, Bakey. Sorry, sorry, Wilson. Uh, good game, got the goal and clean sheet. Brilliant gesture by Brendan Rodgers at the end of the game with Downing. You'll never walk alone. Yeah, Stuart Downing is obviously going to dominate the comments. Rightly so, he's the guy who caught up Trumps and won the game for us. So let's start with him. Um, I, t I was impressed with him in the first half. A few people said he was he was an anonymous. Our good friends of the North East Red Men said he was he, he, you know he was, he was anonymous. And that. I thought he did fine. The problem was that I say he had a much better first half. So by you know comparison, maybe perhaps he didn't look as much. But no, I thought he did well. He, he linked up well. He came inside. He looked to play little cheeky three balls and one twos and whatever. He was sound. And I, I don't know whether Johnson's it's an injury or whether it's just a case of. He wants to switch it up, get a more attacking side on there. Maybe he wants to keep Johnson in cotton wool, which would be advisable because he's head and shoulders our best player at the moment. Um, but I thought I didn't think it was a slayer on Stuart Downer to put him at left back. I actually thought it was quite a bold sort of attacking tactical move anyway. And he did as a left back. Yeah, he's not great, is he? Yeah, I mean, there was one or two moments. I think the 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 commentary team on ATV Four tried to try to pin one particular instance in the left back position on him, but Sahin sold him down the river with a terrible pass. And there's the one that they highlighted where he plays it across the box, which is a bit, a little bit dicey. Um, but it's, what's interesting to note in that is, uh, you know, three weeks a month ago they just scored from that. Now maybe that's just luck, but if it's luck, great, because <laughs> we haven't had it so far this season. So far this season, people have capital, capitalized, capitalized, capitalized on that, on those mistakes, and it's cost us points. It's cost us. It's cost us games. So great to see us come through that with a few hairy moments, but come out on top. As mentioned there, and we've discussed this at length on this week's subscriber show. Um, Brad Jones, great. You know, did he, he didn't have a great deal to do, but he just looks assured, dominant. A few people have commented how vocal he is as well as a goalkeeper, which is great. Which is the bare minimum you expect from a keeper who has basically tantamount to fuck all to do uh, during the 90 minutes. He's got to he's got to keep chatting, keep talking to his defenders, and, and and let people know that he's there. But that that's great. I'm uh, great to see. Past that, I, I, a few people were critical of the first half. It was a bit boring or whatever. I loved it. I was just, I mean, I actually loved it. I, I, I vastly prefer us to, you know, to stop them 5 0 in the first half and, and cruise to cruise the victory. But what I did like was the way we just stroked the ball around. We we were quite, we were a lot more direct, I thought, at times than we have been there uh, this season. I say he was a danger down the left. Suarez did as usual, as, as someone asked the question, he did it, it was one of his ring his neck games. Uh, some of his distribution, or some of his passing, I should say, in the final third, it's just abysmal. But again, he makes these chances for himself, so you take the rough with the smooth. Um, I, I, but it's easy, I think it's easy to say who, who didn't impress. And I think Gerard had a, had a, had a poor game by, by his standards. I don't think Shaheen played particularly well. In the midfield, we didn't actually particularly do. I mean, Shelby had a lot of a lot of sloppy passes as well. Although, again, he got into good positions and he was, he was there to make the mistake, so to speak. The midfield doesn't look the same without Joe Allen. But that being said, it's not like... 
um, Angie Macher, 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 can capitalise on it, is it? So again, you can't really make too many complaints. I just think that I, I'm hoping that Gerard had one eye on the derby and was therefore keeping something in reserve rather than he's goosed and that's all Stephen Gerrard has left in the tank because that doesn't bode well for Sunday. Again, another criticism uh, uh, pointed at Rodgers, he puts a strong side out, you go, oh, what about the derby, what about the derby? As he says himself, you've got to focus on the games in front of you. He won, I think, we would, again, on the subscriber show, we, we basically panned the Europa League and said that we didn't think Liverpool were going to take it thoroughly seriously, but I think that's a real statement of intent. The fact is, you got to look to try and build a bit of momentum and also you know big European nights you want to make Anfield a place that people want to come and you know Angie was a big game for, for, for the level we're at Europa League certainly and, um, and you know we, we put in a good performance all around we completely dominated the match and by all accounts and similar old story I know but we should have scored more but ultimately we did get the winning goal and we got the clean sheet and we take the three points so bonus all round um, Stale looked exceptional coming on again and we've come to accept that but I have to say I think some have said their scale man of the match could have been Danny Agger uh, debatable should, his, his goal probably should have stood shouldn't it I think maybe if he'd gone down or up a little bit more Rather than knocking it through the keeper's hand, that I don't know. I, you've seen them. You've seen them. Good. I think the people quoting the Andy Dibble one from the uh, is the late, the early nineties. I think it is anyway. Um, and not the George Best one, which is ridiculous because Banks goes to kick it, he flicks it off him and scores, but then it doesn't get given. So I don't know what people are talking about with that one. Um, but <laughs> I thought Skate and Agger were great. I thought I thought Asaidi. I'm going to give Asaidi my man of the match because. He was a constant threat up until like you know the last few minutes as well, and most people would have been getting leggy. He was still offering a fantastic outlet down the left, and he uh, probably should have had a penalty as well. Getting into the box, and he just got bummed to the floor by a guy who's clearly four times his size. <laughs> On other days, uh, you get a penalty. Uh, perhaps other days, uh, as another club, we probably get a penalty, but we've come to accept that as a lot in life this season haven't we anyway um, we'll leave it there I thought it was uh, overall a very very pleasant way to spend a Thursday evening I hope you did too uh, please do tune in uh, this week in fact tomorrow uh, if you're watching this on you know Thursday Friday Saturday we'll have our uh, Merseyside Derby special will be available a 70 minute show will be available uh, to subscribers on the redmantv.com but we're also going to be putting a few choice segments out of it um, on YouTube as well for you to check out and see what kind of uh, shenanigans we get up to behind the paywall so please do tune in for that hope you enjoy it hope more importantly that you enjoy the derby on Sunday fingers crossed let's stuff the blue shades good night see you later Sarah.